So here we're under a split screen bus. Um, as you can see, the frame horns and engine support has all been cut out, which is on the ground there. So where these are cut, where you've cut these off, um, I've marked everything pink that needs to be ground down. So these two lines where the frame horns and the um, that whole mount system was uh, welded in there from factory, and then you can see where we've cut here as well. We've cut two parts here, but all the pink parts need to be ground down. So the, these need to be ground down um, flush with the torsion tube. The studs need to either be taken out or cut off at an angle grinder, um, both studs. And then this part here, that little knob part, needs to be ground um, flat back to here, which we'll take photos of when we've done it. And also these here need to be flush. Um, and then this part here needs to be back flush to the torsion housing tube as well. So that part there, that whole flat part, needs to come back ground flat flush with this. And that's all because the end plate sits there. And what we're trying to achieve is a three millimetre gap between the end plate and the torsion housing. And as you can see there, that's about 20 mil or so. So that needs to come into being around about um, sort of that close, about three mil. But anyway, we'll get to that next. Um, and then the other thing you can see, the two pink dots there, the two pink dots, one there and one there. That's just a guide for where we've got to uh, cut the floor because this mount actually sits up in and it would hit the uh, floor if we don't cut the floor out. And then you just make a plate for the back of that, which is later on in the video um, at a later stage. So as you can see, all of that is now ground flat. The knob's gone, these are flush. All this is flush where the frame horns were. Perfect. Okay, so when you're looking at the center of the vehicle, where that knob was and where the shift rod was, this is the center. So we've gone one, two ribs over. So if we're calling this a rib, one, two, three, four ribs. We've gone from the inside rib here to the inside rib here, um, which is 240 mil wide, but you don't really need to know that measurement is, as long as you use these two ribs, but it'd be good to check it. And then the height from the cut from, there's a bend there. You might not be able to see it well, but basically that lip, and then there's a bend there. And then there's a hundred mil from the top until that bottom cut, which is on that um, bend. Okay, so then as you just bend that panel in, you can see the transmission now has got heaps of room. And then what we'll do is we'll make up and fabricate a uh, plate, which we'll show you later, basically just a roof piece. And then a piece that's that triangular piece as well for both sides. So anyway, that's the cut side of everything done. Okay, so this is the T1 split screen transmission mount bracket. The two holes there are for the two bolts that go into the transmission mount. And then this part here is welded to the torsion housing, to the torsion bar housing um, in the rear of your vehicle. So you'd want to get some sandpaper or a flap disc on a grinder and just grind the paint back here and on the other side as well and maybe across the front face. So this can be welded to the torsion housing. And we do have some other videos and photos of installations of split screens and it's very important that this is welded in the correct spot or you won't be able to close your engine lid because of the full length of um, the engine from the harmonic balancer, the front pulley, all the way back to the transmission is uh, quite long and it's got to be in the perfect spot to then be able to close your uh, engine lid. So that's a bit of info on that. Okay, so we've got our engine and transmission in. Here's the hole that we've cut for the clearance. We've got three millimetre packers uh, masking taped to the end plate. So there's one on this side and there's one on this side. Now this, what this allows us to do, it allows us to butt this end plate up, hard up against the torsion housing, knowing that we'll always keep a three millimetre gap. And these packers we actually leave in while we're setting the engine mount um, cradle we actually leave these packers in so that we know that we're never gonna creep forward. Um, now, the other thing is, you don't wanna make this gap too big because the bigger this gap is, actually means that the engine won't fit in. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot of room back here. It does fit, um, and there's uh, modifications to the engine lid and this rear panel, but 
that's where that sits. So it's important that this three millimeter gap uh, is kept. And with this bracket now, we're up to welding this in. So we've cleaned this up. We'll clean that up a little bit more. Um, you find the center. So you measure between these two points and get the center. And then when the engine and transmission's up in, that sits there like that. So get some good angles so you can see where it sits. And then we'll tack this mount in place. So we've got the bracket now tacked in place. We had a few good tacks on this side so that we knew it wasn't going to move when we did remove the transmission and the engine. And now we'll uh, weld that right up. So with the cover plate that we make up the top, we've just made a cardboard template. Obviously you see where it's gonna sit up in there. And then we'll make that out of um, sheet metal. And then we'll weld that in there. Okay, so that's the sheet metal plate that's been made up and all sealed. She used polyurethane to seal it after it's been welded in. And then there's the mount. So with the rear panel, with this particular model splitty, with that style latch, uh, we actually just made a little piece there for it to clip onto. It's all very tight as we know, but it does work. We just had to notch in around here. You've got a notch and cut here as well. And then also this part along here, you have to clearance as well. But that's it. So we've now installed the engine cradle. So the engine cradle, again, it's important to install the engine cradle with the three millimeter packers um, in between the torsion housing and the end plate. We've seen this, but that's all welded up in there. It's the mount. And then above the transmission, you can see there's plenty of room there now for when the transmission does uh, stall up or when, when you're in drive and you accelerate, the end of the transmission will want to move in the upwards direction. So that gives it plenty of room there. So you just have a little look around. There's nothing touching. This end piece here fits in that notched out part that we clearanced so you just have a good look make sure nothing's touching which nothing is there and so we should be good to continue on so to reposition uh the rear wheel in the right spot and the rear hub we actually need to cut your uh split screen that's this is a standard split screen spring plate as you can see it's quite long and this here is a standard split screen spring plate that's been cut down to the same length as a late bay window so i'm talking from 73 to 79 model combi uh, that's the length from the center to these bolt holes and we've got a template that we gave to our machine guy down the road and he milled this and drilled it out so that he used the template laid it over the top got the length of a late bay spring plate measured from the center to the holes and then cuts this down um, to the correct size using a template. So he draws the holes on your splitty standard spring plate and then it ends up looking like this at the end. And then what that does, that positions the rear wheel in the correct spot, just like a late bay. So as you can see, there's still a bit of an offset between the flange and the hub, but it makes the angle so it's not so acute that it actually still works. So this spring plate here has already been cut down to the same length as a late bay from the centre out to these bolts. And then the reverse rear IRS kit, this arm, that's a new arm and pivot box, all puts it in the correct position for the reverse rear Subaru automatic transmission. So just to go over that in a little bit more detail, again, this is the standard split screen uh, spring plate which will come out of your splitty uh, that's exactly how it'll look this is just a end of a late bay one that we've cut off to give the uh, this is a template to give the template to the machine shop 
Uh, this here is literally um, out of a 1975 model combi. So the goal here is to get the split screen spring plate uh, the exact same length as a late bay. And this one here is actually a genuine splitty spring plate that has been cut down using this template um, to the same length as the late, blade, late bay spring plate, as you can see there. Um, so that's the one of the tasks that you've got to uh, manage and attack uh, to install the Reversaroo Subaru four-speed auto into a splitty. Okay, so this side's actually still apart. So this is the genuine split screen spring plate that's been cut down to the same length as a late bay window. This arm is part of the Reversaroo IRS kit which positions it all in the right spot. So you get that arm as part of the kit and you also get the pivot box uh, as well. And so that positions it all in such a way that the Reversaroo four-speed auto, Subaru auto, works in a split-screen combi. Okay, so now it's all together. We've got this brake kit um, installed. We decided to put disc brakes on this one. Uh, the spring plate's been cut down to the late bay length. The Reversaroo IRS kit's been installed, which is you get this arm and you get the pivot box as well. And then that positions this rear hub 19 millimeters back further than it would uh, sit originally. So your wheelbase does increase by about 19 millimeters, three quarters of an inch. Um, but as you can tell, you can't even really tell that it's been done. We've done a fair few of these now and um, there's been no complaints or no one saying it looks odd or anything like that. But what that does is it allows the CVs to actually operate still without clicking or busting because uh, by putting this hub back, it lessens the angle for this CV shaft to run and operate. So this is the piece of sheet metal that's been cut and re-welded for the transmission on the underside to give it clearance. And that's the way we do our wiring, ECU and TCU.